Hello and welcome everyone to the third session of the DuraCloud Brown Bag Series of 2013. As many of you probably know, my name is Carissa Smith and I am the Partner Specialist primarily working on the DuraCloud project, which is both a managed service and an open source technology offered by the DuraSpace not-for-profit organization. To find out more about either DuraCloud or DuraSpace, I encourage you to visit their respective websites at duracloud.org and duraspace.org. Please note that uh, your audio for today's session uh, is disabled, as you probably already observed, but I highly encourage participation through the chat feature, which is located in the bottom right of your screen. Simply insert your question or comment uh, into the little chat feature and click the conversation bubble to send it to the entire group. Um, Tim and I will certainly be taking questions at the end of today's session, so feel free to insert your questions or comments as we go through the demo today or hold them uh, until the end, and then we will address all of the questions that have come in through the chat um, at the end of the session. With that, I'd like to get today's brown bag session started. Uh, I am very happy to introduce Timothy Donahue, who is the DSpace technical lead at the DuraSpace organization, and he will be demoing and uh, discussing how to preserve DSpace content uh, with DuraCloud. So with that, I'm going to go on mute and I will be monitoring the chat uh, feature if anybody has technical issues or uh, questions, and I'll turn it over to Tim. Okay, hello everybody, this is Tim Donahue. Um, I'm going to switch us off these slides here so we can actually go to more of a uh, live demonstration um, of the actual, of DSpace and actually backing things up to DuraCloud, obviously. So, here we go. Okay, so you should now be able to see um, my web browser. Um, uh, currently what I'm showing you here to start out with is just a wiki page off of the DSpace wiki, because uh, what we're, what really makes all this magic happen for backing up DSpace to DuraCloud is the replication task suite, which you may or may not have heard of. Um, it's essentially a an add-on tool to DSpace. It does not come out of the box with DSpace at this point in time, uh, but it works with DSpace 1.8 or um, any of the DSpace 3 systems. Uh, it does not support any system earlier than that at this point in time. But um, essentially what this add-on provides is it provides a set of curation tasks uh, to DSpace that allow you to do backups and restores directly from your DSpace administrative interface. Uh, it does this by generating a set of archival information packages for DSpace, and I'll talk a little bit more about um, that as we get through this demo. But essentially, I do want to note that uh, a lot more information is on this wiki page. On the uh, DSpace wiki, it talks about the installation process, how you can configure this add-on. I'm not going to go through any of the actual uh, installation or configuration today, just because it's not as flashy for a demo, per se. Uh, but if you end up wanting to try and go install it yourself, uh, you're welcome to ask myself or uh, Richard Rogers from MIT. We were the two main developers of this particular suite of tasks. Feel free to ask us questions or post to the DSpace list and we'd be glad to try and help you out along the way. Uh, so what we're really here to show off is obviously the DSpace to DuraCloud backup. So what I have starting out here is a virtual DSpace. Uh, this is actually showing our uh, DSpace Direct service that um, DuraSpace is now um, going to be offering coming in coming up in July. We're working with some early adopters around this. But this is our demonstration site. It's just a plain out-of-the-box DSpace 3.1 um, installation. Uh, it's got a small amount of content in it right now, not a whole lot here, really just one community, a collection of some items, and let's see how many we got in here. We got a total of nine items in here, so there's not really a whole lot of content. But this will give us a good uh, background to sort of play around with and show how we can back this content up and how we can even restore things back into it. So I have this in one of my tabs, uh, my DSpace instance. And another tab here, I actually have a DuraCloud instance. Um, I'm particularly, let me refresh this, make sure I'm still logged in. I'm particularly highlighting right now a particular space within this DuraCloud instance, the AIP dash store space. 
by default, when you install the replication task suite, uh, it's going to always back up your D space into a space of this name. You can change the name if you wanted to. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, you can call it my backup, my D space backup, whatever you want to call it is totally up to you. It's configurable in the configuration files of the replication task suite. But you just need to make sure that your DuraCloud has a space of that particular name. So I already, already have this space existing in my DuraCloud instance. It's currently empty, as you see. So there's nothing backed up to DuraCloud at this point in time. But I can go back over to my DSpace instance now. And I'm going to go to my home page. Um, I'm logged in at the DSpace instance right now as a demo administrator. So I'm already logged in as a full site-wide administrative user. Uh, by default, these curation tasks can only really be run by administrative users. Obviously, for security reasons, you don't want anybody to be able to do things with this. So you do need to be an administrative user. And to get to the replication task suite tools, they're just a part of the regular curation tasks. So in my admin menu here, I can click on the curation tasks option, and I get presented with the currently installed um, curation tasks, a list of the groups of curation tasks that I have installed in this DSpace instance, the general purpose ones which actually come with DSpace out of the box. And then as I had mentioned, I already have pre-installed the replication suite of tasks. So for this particular purpose, I'm going to grab the replication suite of tasks. I then can view all of the various tasks that are available that come out of the box with this suite once it's installed. Um, what we're going to first do here is actually do an initial backup to DuraCloud. I could kick this off from the user interface, which I'm going to do here shortly. You can also even do this initial sort of backup from the command line. Since all of these uh, replication tasks are just curation tasks, they could be run from the command line if you wanted to. They could be scheduled to run on a periodic basis via a cron job or similar, um, but obviously for today's demo, I'm going to just run it right here from the user interface. So our first thing is to actually back stuff up to our storage location. So I'm going to transmit um, my AIPs up into my storage location. As you can tell, this task doesn't say anything about what that storage location is. Um, I've configured it to go to my DuraCloud account into that particular um, space within DuraCloud. But you could actually configure this to just back up to a hard drive or a mount point. Um, it could back up to wherever you want, um, but DuraCloud is one of the options for this sort of backup location. So if I want to back up my entire site, what I actually enter is what's popping up here in my little, my little hint. I can enter in the handle for our site. So this particular demonstration has a handle prefix of uh, 10673. Um, the suffix here, the end of it, is zero, which actually is the site prefix for any DSpace site. Um, it's not really well advertised, but that's kind of how it works. That's why we have this little hint up here telling you to just enter your handle prefix slash zero to run a site-wide task. So what I'm going to do here now is actually perform this task, which is going to take a little time to come back. It's running in the background. You can kind of see it processing um, in my web browser. If we pop over to our DuraCloud um, area, this space which is pre-configured, and refresh it, we'll start to see things appear here as our DSpace is backing up into DuraCloud. So we have already have eight packages here that have popped up into our DuraCloud instance. Um, you'll see there are a variety of packages. They're all zip files. And actually, it looks like my tab completed. OK, so if I go back to my tab here, we have a successful message that everything was transmitted up to storage successfully. If anything failed along the way, you'd get a little red box here, and it would tell you what error happened. And you could retransmit as needed. Uh, there's also some other validation tools, which we'll go through as part of this demo. But going back to our DuraCloud space here real quick, we'll refresh. What we end up having in our space is a variety of zip files. So as I had mentioned and shown, we had one community in our demo instance. We had one collection. So we have a single community zip file, a single collection zip file. And we had a total of nine items, which are actually right here. There's nine items zip files here. 
There's also a site zip file as well. Each of these um, zip packages is actually an archival information package which describes the particular object that it refers to. And you can tell they're kind of named in a straightforward manner. You can tell the type of object starts off the naming. You have an at symbol and then the thing that follows that is actually the handle of that particular object within the DSpace system. So the site-wide AIP actually stores a METS file with metadata about your entire site. And the metadata that exists at that site level are things like uh, the groups that exist, uh, the authorization groups, the e-people within your DSpace. Uh, the, that's all metadata that's at the site level. And so that's described in that site-wide AIP. Community and collection AIPs have metadata about the communities and the collections. So it's basically, you know, the, the information that appears on your community homepage or your collection homepage, the name of the collection, the description, um, even logos would appear, would be within this zip package as well so that you could restore that community to the state that it was in as needed. The item AIPs then logically, of course, will contain the metadata for an individual item um, in Dublin Core format, which is the DSpace main format. It also actually will translate that metadata into a, um, a mods format as well, so that you could reuse these AIPs to even migrate to a different system from DSpace if you needed to, or move things around to a different system if you wanted to. But um, additionally, with that metadata and the item packages, you got all of the, the normal um, bit streams, the actual files that are associated with an item. So if there's a PDF item you're going to have in this zip file, the PDF that goes along with that, along with a, a METS file, which describes all of the metadata about that particular item. So the cool thing about all of this then is that we have individual objects here backed up into DuraCloud. So we could actually restore any particular object or the entire set of objects should something go wrong in our DSpace instance along the way. So if we go back to our, our DSpace instance, we're back here at this system curation page. Um, I'll talk about a couple of these other replication tasks that are available uh, that come with the replication task suite. There's an estimate storage space for AIPs. This is sort of a general task, which if we kick it off, will give us a, a general estimate of approximately how much space our AIPs are going to take up. Um, this says it's only about 68 megs for this tiny uh, DSpace instance. It's a very rough estimate, I should mention. It's just sort of trying to get a general sense of how much content you have. So the content that you actually end up having stored up in DuraCloud or wherever you're doing your backups to may actually be slightly more or slightly less than this estimate. But at least it gives you a good range of how much content you have to back up. Uh, it also has a, an odometer, which actually will try and track all of the uploads and downloads that you're doing via the replication task suite. So if I click perform here, it'll show that um, for my particular test instance, and I was doing some testing before this particular demo, so it's going to actually show a little bit of higher content here. It's shown that I've moved around a total of 24 objects. Um, it's basically two times the 12 objects that I've been doing because I'd done a test just before this. And it shows around how much, um, how much uploads I've been doing, how many downloads I've been doing, so that you can get a sense of how much you're actually pushing up into DuraCloud and downloading from DuraCloud. Again, these are somewhat rough estimates. They're not exact in all ways, but we're trying to get it even better and more exact along the way. So that's another option that's available. Then you have all of the various tools to actually get stuff into your storage area, into DuraCloud, or restore stuff from DuraCloud. So we ran the transmit task, which is the actual backup process. And as I'd mentioned, you can run this from the actual user interface, or for a very large DSpace, you're probably going to want to run it initially, at least, from the command line. Um, because if you ran it from the web interface, it could take too long to come back and something could time out along the way. Um, so for large instances, you'd want to initially do your backup from the command line. Uh, you also have the option to verify that things actually made it up into our storage location. This just does a very quick um, verification. So if we perform this, all this is really doing is it's checking that every object in your current DSpace instance 
has a corresponding AIP, Archival Information Package, up in DuraCloud. And we'll see that it returns with a success message that it's found everything. If any object was missing from DuraCloud, we would get an error here and it would report exactly which object did not have an AIP up in DuraCloud. So that's just sort of a quick verification process. There's a more thorough verification, which is actually an audit, a full audit. Um, with the full audit option, what actually happens, it takes a little bit longer to actually process because what DSpace will do is it will regenerate each of the AIPs in your local storage, just in a temporary location. And as it generates each AIP, it will quickly compute a checksum. It will figure out what the checksum of that AIP looks like. And then it will compare that checksum to the checksum that DuraCloud reports that it has. So it can do a very quick verification via those checksums to make sure those AIPs are identical. If it finds any AIP during that process that is not identical to the one that's in DuraCloud, it'll report that a specific AIP um, is, has changed in some way, shape, or form. It is worth noting here that because it's working based on checksums, any tiny change in your DSpace system will actually cause the checksum to be different. So if somebody went in and modified you know, one metadata field or just changed something very minor, added a single character, the AIP generated after that point in time will actually be different, obviously, than the one that's up in DuraCloud. Um, and so there are options with the uh, replication task suite to actually uh, hook it up in a more automated fashion via uh, cron jobs behind the scenes where you can actually say anytime a DSpace item or collection or community changes, I want to automatically uh, push that change up into DuraCloud so that it's basically doing single, single AIP pushes up to DuraCloud one by one as things change within your system. So it's a way to sync up your local system with DuraCloud without having to constantly run audits and full transmissions up, essentially. Sort of an automated sync option. Um, there's also options here to actually clean up stuff from storage. So if you ever actually wanted to get rid of your remote storage, you could delete it all from here. Uh, you could restore individual or multiple objects from that storage location. So we have multiple restore options. There's restoring missing objects, so objects that are missing in your local DSpace but exist as AIPs remotely. There's a restore missing objects but keep existing objects, so that's slightly different because the first one will error out if it, re if it encounters any object locally that, um, that it can't actually restore along the way. So, or that it doesn't, or that is already synced up essentially with the remote AIP that's not missing. Um, this particular option says to skip over any of those and just say, okay, if it's existing here and we already have it in place, we're going to skip over those and we're going to just look for objects that are actually missing. The ones that are actually missing will we'll restore along the way. There's also an option to restore just single objects. So the by default, these missing object restorations will go through and if you run it at a collection level, it's going to look at every single item within that collection and see if it can restore it. Um, but if you're just wanting to restore a single object, if you're just wanting to restore the specific collection, you can do that as well and not worry about any of the, the actual items underneath it. Or if you're restoring a community, it won't go through and try and restore all of the collections or sub-communities underneath it. And that comes in handy when it's a really a known object that you're just trying to restore um, a single object of. Um, if something gets corrupted along the way, you can also do replacements. So you can actually say, okay, I know my local object is bad. I want to actually replace it entirely uh, with what's in remote storage. And we'll go through a lot of these actually as examples, but I just want to kind of go through each of these. Any of these tasks, uh, you can choose to not enable from the web user interface if you're a little bit too nervous about yourself or um, or one of your other administrators accidentally, for example, removing all of your AIPs from backup, uh, you can choose in the configuration files not to allow that option from the web user interface, but only allow it down at the command line for people who have command line access. So that's something just worth noting. So now to actually show this all in action, 
let's go to our communities here and collections. So what we're going to start out with is um, let's go to a collection and let's suppose that somewhere along the way something has gotten corrupted with your collection or maybe somebody messed it up that didn't wasn't really supposed to change this collection. So we'll go in and we're going to edit our collection. We're going to just wipe out all of this introductory text and um, we're going to add a little bit of gobbledygook on the end of the name here. Uh, we'll change the short description and we'll actually go down here and remove uh, the collection logo. So I'm going to save all of these updates. Um, so now we have a collection that has a bunch of gobbledygook on the end. We've lost our logo that was in this collection. We've lost um, the the main um, descriptive content, a lot of that um, content that was here to begin with. Um, so our collection is kind of not in the state that we want it to be in. But we do have obviously that backup up in DuraCloud of the last the last known good state is up there in DuraCloud. Um, I'm also going to do another thing here just to kind of show off something else that we can do. So we have a particular item here, a DSpace Direct demo item that I had created along the way. And let's just go in here and let's delete this item. I'm going to permanently delete it from DSpace. So now we got our corrupted collection and rather than having um, nine items in the system, we now only have eight items. So we've got a bad collection and we've lost an item along the way. And what we can actually do then is from those curation tasks, as I had mentioned, we can go through here and run a site-wide task and perform an audit of everything with, within our site and compare it up to what's in DuraCloud. Um, I, I should mention actually there's two buttons here. I've been performing things from the user interface the whole time. Uh, the perform does things in a live fashion so it's going to always wait and do all the processing behind the scenes. Um, that's obviously very useful if you're working with small amounts of content. If you have a large DSpace instance like a huge site you probably don't want to do the the perform um, on the entire site um, at once necessarily unless it's a thing that's going to respond relatively quickly because of the fact that things again could time out. Um, rather than doing that live perform what you can do is you can queue up a task to actually be run behind the scenes. Uh, the queue basically just writes that that you want this particular task to be performed um, and then it's expected behind the scenes when you configure the replication task suite, you configure an actual cron job to check that queue on a regular basis, however frequently you want it checked, and run those tasks for you. And it can report those, the results of those tasks to a log file, it could email you, it could do any number of things. But that's just worth noting that there's those two options available. But we're going to run a live audit here on this particular DSpace instance. This will take a little while to come back. Okay, so the task completed successfully, but the result here was actually a failure. It shows that, okay, it knows that the checksums of what's in our current system and what's up in DuraCloud differ for this particular handle. If we go back to our collection, so this is the, the handle ending in two. If we go back to our collection, we'll actually find that this is the thing that it's reporting has a improper checksum. Something has changed in our collection. So it is worth mentioning here, of course, we know that two things have changed. We know that an item was deleted and we know that um, the metadata was messed up along the way. Um, in the audit there, it's going to only report the first thing that it finds that has changed along the way. It's just for processing sake. It's not going to keep going through every single item in the system when you run it from the user interface. So when you run it from the user interface, it's going to find the first failure and report that first failure back to you so you know that something is wrong. Um, but if you want to find every single possible failure that has happened, um, it's actually recommended to then go to the command line or have your administrative user, um, administrator, your system administrator, go to the command line and run the audit from the command line. At the command line, the audit will report every single thing that is wrong, not just the first thing that it found that was wrong. So we're working on ways to improve that in the in the admin user interface, but this is just sort of the the first way of getting this a basic sort of audit in place um, so that we can at least tell if something has gone wrong. So since we know our particular collection is corrupted, 
uh, what we can actually do then is restore that content from what is in our backup. So if I go down to uh, our editing of the collection, the collection has its own curation tab. Um, from there, you can actually then access the replication task suite as well. And we can do a, in this case, we want to actually replace the collection locally. And it's also going to go through and find any other objects underneath the collection and replace those or restore them as needed. So this is going to both replace our collection with the proper metadata as it was, as it was before, as well as it's also going to find that one item that we ended up deleting along the way, and it's going to restore that item so that it's back within our DSpace instance. So the replacement was um, returned successfully. We're going to go return back to our collection home page, and you'll see the collection name is now correct again. We've got our logo back. We've got our descriptive text has been returned back. Um, if we go to the actual list of titles here in DSpace, you'll see that the the night that um, one object that I had created, that particular item I had created, has been restored as well. Um, I should also mention here in the restoration process, it's not only restoring uh, the content that was there, it's also restoring the permissions. So there was a lock icon here. This was a restricted file before. That same lock icon was restored with the same permissions um, as previously. So that gives a very simple example of a restoration um, now to just go to the total extreme, the other thing you actually can do here is if I go to my community, since I've got a single community here, I'm going to bring this to the extreme, and I'm going to delete this community, um, which is also going to delete all of the, the collections and the items underneath it. So if I go to my titles, I'm now working with an empty D space. Um, I could even go to the groups here, and um, you can see in the groups in the D space, well, we've got a single group here. Let's go ahead and clear that out. So our, our groups now, we're down to just the administrator group and the anonymous group. That's all that's left in our D space. So essentially what we're working with is a totally fresh D space for the most part with no content, no groups whatsoever. But since we have our backup up there in the cloud, um, I can go through here and actually do a full restoration. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to do a replace existing objects with AIPs. The reason I'm running a replace here rather than a restore is because I'm wanting to actually um, replace the existing groups that are already within our DSpace instance as well. So it's going to run the site-wide replace. It's going to replace from the site AIP all of the groups that were deleted. Um, which got deleted alongside the deletion of the collection and community. There will be some community and collection groups that will come back, as well as it's going to go through and restore that community, the collection, and all the items that are missing. So this actually gives an example of when you have this backup in the cloud, in DuraCloud, um, if your DSpace got totally wiped out or something got corrupted on your DSpace instance, you actually can just bring up a very a fresh copy of DSpace, um, reinstall the replication task suite on that fresh copy of DSpace and configure it to point to your DuraCloud backup and then do a full restoration of all of your content. It'll pull down everything from DuraCloud and restore, as I mentioned, the communities, the collections, the items, the groups, the people, all of the authorizations and permissions that are in your system. So this is taking a little while to process here. Even with a small um, DSpace instance, it will take some time because it's having to pull down each of those uh, zip files, unzip each one, and restore each one one by one. So with a larger instance, you, this would be a task that you would want to kind of run again from the command line um, to make sure that uh, it's not going to fail out just because of limits in um, web communication along the way. But it should return here shortly as soon as it's finished up with our backup as soon as it's finished up being restoring from our backup. So if we go back to our DuraCloud instance, of course, we've still got those same files here, and we've got a return back here on our tab, a return of success from all of um, our restoration. And now if we go back to our DSpace homepage, we've got our community back, uh, we've got our collections back, and we've actually got all nine of our items back. 
but that's the full backup that we had done. If we go back to our um, administrative access controls as well and click on the groups, you'll also see it's recreated uh, collection and community uh, groups that were a part of those collections and communities and added the members back into them. So um, some of these have one member within them. So it's restored all of the actual people that were deleted out of the system, if any were deleted, as well as all of the groups. So I think that's basically the the basic uh, sample of how you can do this full backup of DSpace um, up to DuraCloud and do a full restoration along the way as well. Um, as I mentioned, it can also be used for even migrations, bringing up a fresh DSpace. You can move all this content to that fresh DSpace in a very quick fashion um, along the way. So that's basically the example I wanted to give for today, and I'll stop there and um, open the floor up for any questions. As Carissa had mentioned, uh, you can type any questions into the chat box, and I'll be glad to try and answer them along the way. Okay, Bob Sandusky just asked, um, what if any functional differences in, in the replication task suite if you're using a backup service other than DuraCloud? Um, so, uh, yeah, you can, you can hook the replication task suite up to just a mounted drive or even a local drive. The big differences there um, are really it's going to just store the AIPs in wherever you're telling it to store it. So it's going to store it in that mounted drive or a, a local drive that you've asked it to. Um, the thing that you lose in not, it not being in DuraCloud is that DuraCloud will allow you to, um, to replicate these obviously much more remotely. You can put them in multiple storage providers if you wanted to within DuraCloud. Um, you can get the advantage of the various DuraCloud auditing tools, which just audit um, your content that's actually within DuraCloud. Um, so the advantage of having DuraCloud versus other sort of backup solutions are really that you add on the various DuraCloud um, features um, to these uh, backed up AIPs. And plus they're up at a remote location that you could access from anywhere rather than on just a local drive. But other than that, the actual AIPs that are generated and the process of doing the, the backups or the restoration are identical um, based on whatever service you want to use, whether that's DuraCloud or just a local backup. Are there any other questions? Everyone, feel free to insert as many questions as you have for Tim regarding the, the DSpace replication task suite or DSpace in general, or um, if anybody has any DuraCloud related questions, maybe not exactly related to Tim's demonstration today, feel free to insert those into the chat. Tim, if you don't mind, I'm going to switch over to my slides again real quick. Sure. If I remember how to do this. <laughs> Here, I stopped sharing. You should be able to grab and I it. see Marty just inserted a question, so I'll let you handle that and I will update the slides. Okay, so Marty asked, um, in the replication test suite, does an object refer to an item, a bit stream, or whatever? Um, essentially, an object for the replication task suite, um, each of these AIPs sort of represents an object. So for the replication task suite, an object can be a community, a collection, or an item. Um, there is not um, objects referring to bit streams because bit streams are actually a part of the item AIP that is generated. So for, as I had mentioned, the item archival information package includes a, a METS file, uh, which actually has all the metadata about that item. And then it also includes all of the actual content files, the bit streams, are within that item AIP. Um, and that METS file also describes the various bundles and the, the any sort of uh, lower level stuff about the bit streams that is necessary to restore an item AIP. So the lowest level that an object gets within the replication task suite is the item level. At the community and collection level, you're really just describing metadata about those collections and communities along with uh, what their sort of child objects are. So a collection contains items and a community can contain collections or other sub-communities. 
Any other questions? Any other questions? So while we wait for other folks to answer or ask questions, um, I'll do one shameless plug for uh, DuraCloud trial accounts. And actually, I wanted to particularly point out that the DuraCloud trial account process is now uh, revamped entirely. In other words, you get immediate access to a DuraCloud uh, trial account. Simply click on the No Waiting Try It Now link on DuraCloud.org. Insert, uh, I think it's your name and your email address into the web form, and you will be automatically emailed uh, login credentials to a DuraCloud account that you can then uh, try out on the fly. So there's no longer a waiting process. You get immediate access to DuraCloud, uh, which is new and improved. And then the last thing that I wanted to advertise today is the next brown bag session uh, on May 29th, and we'll be talking about uh, Amazon Glacier and DuraCloud's uh, upcoming integration with Amazon Glacier as well. So if uh, cold cloud storage is of interest to you folks, I would encourage you to tune in on May 29th. We'll be talking about uh, the Glacier integration and taking any and all questions that you may have. Um, of course, as always, I highly uh, encourage topic suggestions to be emailed to me. I'm happy to cover anything or have guest speakers like Tim and other field experts come in and talk about topics that are of interest to the community. And uh, again, probably as you all know, we have a, a website um, dedicated to this brown bag series as well as all of the recordings are posted on our DuraCloud YouTube channel, which is also linked off of the brown bag series page on duracloud.org. I will pause all of my, <laughs> my, my commercial interruptions net for now and ask if there are any other questions before we let everybody go for the afternoon. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in through the chat. I wanted to take a moment to thank Tim again for taking the time today to do that great demonstration of how to back up a DSpace repository into DuraCloud. Um, if anybody has any further questions about, about this that come up later on, feel free to shoot me an email and I will be happy to uh, respond to those and also uh, be on the lookout. I have this uh, session recorded and it will be posted on the DuraCloud YouTube channel later today or tomorrow. So thank you all again for your participation and attendance. It's always great to see a, a group of folks uh, sign in for these brown bag sessions. And thanks again to Tim today for leading the brown bag. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone.